Amen. So yeah, we're, we're talking about a new teaching series this, this year, over the next five weeks, actually. Giant slayers. We've all got big giants in our lives that we um, face in life. Sometimes massive things, sometimes smaller things, but we all face giants in our lives. And, and today I'm going to kick off with slaying the giant of fear. Fear. And I've only got a short amount of time. You could spend probably five weeks on the whole topic of fear, but I'm just going to try and skim over it and see. Today, fear. A couple of years ago, I shared about um, a newfound fear that I had, and I, I um, related weeks back with Terence. shared about um, a mouse that he had found in his conservatory, and um, I think he found a new sense of fear in that moment when he did say he screamed, did say he screamed. <laughs> How manly that he is on his bike, he screamed in that moment. <laughs> he says like a girl, okay, I'm quoting him. Um, I screamed when I found a mouse in my house. Mouse in my house? Um, <clears throat> uh, rhyming. Yeah. <laughs> mouse in my house. It took us about two or three weeks to get rid of this mouse. And you know when you've had a mouse, it's not just one, is it? Quite a few. So we discovered that. I really prayed that it was just that one time, but no, it was quite a few mice. So anyway, it took us a two or three weeks to get rid of this mice. And, and you know, when I, when I was so frightened of having mice in my house, it consumed my thinking. It was, it was just in my mind all the time. At night, especially, I was scared. I was so scared. Every noise that I heard, I thought it was this mouse. I thought that it was coming to get me and run across me. And um, I, I just, I, fear just took control of the way that I was thinking. Everything, it just consumed my mind. I remember when um, Reuben was um, about one years old, and we moved him from being in a cot to uh, a big boy's bed. And, um, so we moved, and the first week was fine. But then afterwards, I think the realization hit home to him that, oh, I've got no walls to protect me. I don't know what was going on in his head, but he was, fri he was really frightened. And he screamed, and he did not want to go to bed. Um, and, and for a whole year, me and Luke had to just sit at the end of the bed and wait for him to just drop off to sleep. a nightmare. <laughs> it wasn't... <laughs> Um, but, and, you know, we found out, like, doing a G.I. Joe obstacle course, find out where the, um, the creaky floorboards are in your house. And it, just you try and find that and creep out so you can wake him. But he was scared. Fear took control of his life in that moment. Me, I've talked so many times about my own fears, not just the mice, but bigger fears than that, bigger fears, fears of public speaking. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> speaking really it frightens me. I worry about saying the wrong thing. I worry about being theologically incorrect. I worry about saying alliteration when I should have said rhyming. <laughs> I worry about stuff like that. Anxiety kicks in in that moment. I face that all the time. Confrontation, nobody likes confrontation. I hate it, but it grips me sometimes. And I think every single one of us faces giant, whether you think you're like Tez, big strong man, you know, every one of us feels some sort of worry, anxiety, fear that comes in, and we all face it in our lives. Name a few, fear of failure, fear of man, inadequacy, alone, rejection, and then there's the cousins, I call it, the cousins of fear, anxiety, worry, stress. We all face something, wherever we may be today. I remember a couple of weeks back when it was Mother's Day weekend, I went to go and visit, um, well, halfway, met my mum Mother's Day on that Saturday after the drive through And um, I, was, I met her halfway at the service station here in Bradford. And all of a sudden, I was about to think, yeah, I can do this, but I, get, I need to get on the motorway <laughs> in order to drive to get there. But I've not done that for over a year. And you know, at the, moment, the thoughts just came into my mind, what if I crashed? What if it all oh, the motorway's really fast? What if, I, what if I don't make it? I've got to drive back in the dark. And all these, you, you think up, you write a story that actually isn't true. We, our mind goes overload and it, it, it just, not good. Fear can stop us from walking into our destiny. Fear can stop us from using our gifts, from using our talents. Fear can stop us from blessing 
other people or sharing the love. If we're not careful, be the driving force behind many of our thoughts, many of our decisions we make. Start focusing on the power of fear rather than the power of truth. So if we allow the power of fear influence the way we think, we begin to write a story of our lives that is rooted in fear. Each chapter starts with the, with the phrase, what if? What if? And what the what ifs in our lives controls the way that we think. What if I fail? What if people see the real me? What if uh, my kids get hurt? What if I don't get that job I really want? What if I don't make enough money? What if I'll never get married? The what if starts become the main storyline of our life. If we're not careful, it becomes the bigger voice it controls and it stops us from doing what God has called us. The what ifs become the story of lies. Who wants to read a book about full of lies, right? So I want to address that. Three big weapons that I think you might think of loads of other weapons that you could use against slaying the giant of fear. But I've just picked three out and based on the scripture for today, which is in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. And we're reading from the King James Version. For God, famous verse, for God has not given us spirit of fear, power, love, and of a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and sound mind. Other version says, self-control, self-discipline, looking at the sound mind. We know that God doesn't give us that spirit of fear. It comes from the devil, father of lies. But he is, God has given us a spirit, power of love and a sound mind. Every one of us who have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior has that same power within us. So this verse was taken from the letter that Paul wrote to and Timothy, he was a young leader. If you read around him, he was young, quite inexperienced um, leader who was in charge of the church of the second biggest city of the Roman Empire. He had a huge responsibility on his shoulders. Um, and you can imagine that for Timothy, he might have felt overwhelmed with that responsibility, feeling anxious, how to lead this church in this big city. But Paul writes there to him, not fear. God's got given you a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. They're the three weapons we're focusing on today. God has got not got given us spirit, fear, but of power, the first weapon power. The Holy Spirit is power. The power is mighty, strong. We see the power throughout the Bible. From Genesis, we see the power of the Holy Spirit. It says hovering over the waters. We see in Matthew 12 where Jesus says, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons. We read about it. He operates in the gift of the Holy Spirit all the time, performing miracle after miracle. See, Mary, by the power of the Holy Spirit, conceived and gave birth to Jesus. The Spirit of God that rushed in on those timid disciples and transformed them into being bold apostles. It was Peter who moved from a fearful, cowardly person speaking in front of the religious leaders in Acts 2. It says, let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to overcome. The same power that raised Christ from the dead. We forget that sometimes, don't we? It same power there that raised Christ from the dead that is within us. The power of the Holy Spirit fills us with courage as we walk with him. Holy Spirit's power that changes the what ifs to the I can. I can overcome. I can succeed. I can change my story. Holy Spirit brings power, not fear. Yeah. Second weapon there. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. The weapon of love. 1 John 4, 18 describes it perfectly. 
says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. One who fears is not made perfect. So we don't have to be afraid, do we? When we know that God has got us in his arms, he's a loving father. God is the perfect love of God drives out all fear. We'll never be perfect. We know that because of sin. God chooses. We don't have to strive for perfection because of his grace. He will never give up on us. Love is unfailing. Never grows tired of A perfect love that is. Fear sometimes because forget about that love. Forget about the perfect love of God. Love that drives out fear. It's his love that pushes it away. It is his love that casts it out. Jesus felt the same fear. In Matthew 26, it says, Then Jesus went with his disciples, verse 36, went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul overwhelmed sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as you, but as you. In that moment, Jesus was anxious, feeling overwhelmed. He was feeling sorrowful. It's rest. His death for our lives. Jesus knew that God's love for him, God's perfect love beyond anything. You know, when the kids were really young, go on our English holidays, and um, Luke, Luke would take the kids down to the I don't do the sea. Possibly if it was where else, but in England. I think I've done it once. And um, even then that was with a wetsuit on. But, uh, <laughs> but Luke would take the, the young kids right down to the sea and he would hold their hands and he would take them further and they'll go further and further. And you can see the look on their faces getting a bit scared as they went further and further into the sea. What if the shark bit me? Or what if the fish or the jellyfish stung me? Or whatever. But Luke was right there. He was taking them in further and further. And you can see the look of nervousness on their face, feeling a little bit anxious. But Luke was with them. Luke would protect them. Luke would not let any harm come to them because he was a father, a good father. Romans 8 says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. It's because we're children of God. We're God's children. It's because of his perfect love for us that fear can be cast away. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, but of love, and thirdly, sound mind. Other versions say self-control. Thinking about the mind today. Paul was warning Timothy, be careful, Tim. Don't think too much about that. Don't go down that road and get all anxious and worried about it. Take control of this. Take control of what's going on up there. Be of sound mind. Let's not allow the enemy to control what goes on up here because the battle is God's. It's not ours. We know, though, that the battle is in the mind. This is the... But the, what the devil loves to use <laughs> is this, our minds. Like we said earlier, you spin stories that actually aren't true. You go down roads that you think it, that causes confusion. It causes all sorts of things to make you think that you're trapped in your fear. Um, so yeah, so well, a couple of months ago, well, maybe it was last month, 
me and Luke went to this uh, seminar led by Steve Chup, oh, obviously on Zoom. <laughs> um, Steve Chup. Now, Steve Chup visited our church a number of years ago. He was on the Apostolic LifeLink team, um, and he, he, has, uh, he led this seminar on leading, through, leading with stress, how to deal with stress through the pandemic and all that kind of thing. It's really interested. Um, and I want to pull out some of those things that the thoughts behind um, what I'm sharing with us. He says, when our minds are exposed to anxiety or stress, the creative problem solving and learning part of our brain shuts down. You might know all this already, but I just think. Now, I've had a bit of a stressful week this week, not just because of just doing this, but a lot of different things going on in the background. And then I, got, I found myself getting a little bit stressed, right, kids? <laughs> and when I get a bit stressed, I get a bit, I go really withdrawn, really quiet. I know I'm quiet anyway, but I get even quieter. I go really inside myself, really withdrawn. I start getting a bit snappy, the kids, don't I? And I found, like, I found when I was writing this that none of the creative juices were flowing, and that was because of the stress. It made me even more stressed that I weren't, Right in this <laughs> vicious circle. I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, but we are, need to be of sound mind. We have the ability to flourish within a stressful situation. When it says in Colossians 3, when we set our minds on the things above, keep it set. Very well said that. Easy said and done. Psalm 94 says, when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me. When we are a sound mind, sound mind means to be disciplined in the way that we think, to have control, calm and quiet ourselves. You then begin to write healthy stories. Then begin to write a story full of truth, a story that is noble, a story that is right, a story that is pure and lovely and admirable, a story that is excellent and worthy. A question for you today is, what are you writing? Are you your chapters story full of disappointment, failure, or weakness? You can change that today. Absolutely change that today. How are you, how are you going to do? It's all very well said, all that. That sounds really nicely. But how do you practically walk that out? How do you apply that to your life? How do we slay this giant of fear in our lives, the giant of anxiety, or stress, or whatever you're thinking of right now that you deal with. But I want to put to you a couple of things that we can do. Firstly, let's take the power back. Take back the power. We have to be honest. Have an honest, honest conversation with yourself. What is that fear that you're facing? Name it. Speak it out. Because if we don't, we just get more and more trapped in. We need to name the fear. Let's take back the power that it has over our lives and not to pretend we're very good at pretending, aren't we? Not stressed, not fearful. I'm all right. I'm, all right. I'm very good at that. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm all right. But let's be honest and talk it out with someone. Name it, call it out, talk to somebody who will stand by you, who will pray with you through that. Greater is he than he is in. And we know, you know, quote scripture, memorize scripture, find the truth that, that overcomes the, the lie. Find it, write it everywhere, put it on your mirror, in your Bible, whatever, in your car. You know, find the truths that will overcome the fears. We can do that. And it's because of his perfect love for us that he has given us so many promises. I can do all things to overcome fear. I can do all things through Jesus. You are my strong tower, my deliverer. You are faithful. Nothing is impossible. You could go on and on. There's so many promises in the Bible that will overcome lies. But let's take the power back. Let's quote scriptures, get, get it in us. Let's worship. What is a great, worship is a great weapon. Worship. What is the soundtrack that you're listening to? Maybe some of you need to change that soundtrack. What's playing? What's going on in here? Maybe you need to change that. David wrote loads of psalms, didn't he? Loads of songs counteracted the lies. Full of faith. What is your go-to song? We've all got go-to songs, right? 
Waymaker. That's out, pulls that out of the bag. Now, if you've got a go-to song, make a playlist. Practically, make a, a go-to playlist to overcome the fears when you, you, you're surrounded by the stress or the situation, whatever it is that you're facing in your life. Worship. Worship, full of, worship songs that are full of truth. When Luke's working out, he's got a go-to playlist. Rocky comes on. <laughs> I could do this, yeah. And he's all like, he's got this power playlist of just to help him get through it, I think. But make a playlist. Let's worship be a weapon that overcomes fear. So let's take the power back. Let's quote scripture. Let's memorize it. Let's get it in us. Worship. And lastly, let's take control. Let's capture those thoughts that run away with us. Let's capture that, um, the thoughts and the patterns of behaviors that fear brings. Place it with the truth. Yeah, we know that. We know to quote scripture and to do that. But physically, you can do something else. Physically. So by going back to Steve Chupp's seminar, he was talking about different cycles. He talked about two cycles. One cycle was like the reaction cycle. And then he talks about the resilience cycle. You might have heard this before, but if you're in a reaction cycle, you've got your stressful situation going on. And then the stress leads to anxiety. Then anxiety leads to automatic thinking, which leads to poor decisions creates negative outcomes, which creates more stress, and the circle goes on and on. Whereas we need to move from that. I think I was experiencing that this week. I should have, God was teaching me this through this week, even, that I was in this state of reaction cycle. Move from that to the resilience cycle. Now, resilience cycle, you've got your stressful situation. Then you, it says, do calming exercises. Then from calming exercises, you move to intentional from intentional thinking, you make good decisions. From good decisions, you have improved outcomes. That creates the resilience and so forth and so forth. We need to move into that. Think, okay, so you are in the stressful situation, then you have to do some calming exercises. But he went on to talk about the, the, the um, goodness of doing deep breathing. And you know, if, you, if you're a first aider or you're, you're medically minded in that way, you know that if someone's like having a panic attack, you tell them to breathe in slowly, don't you, into a paper bag or whatever. Take deep breaths. Take deep breaths. And you do that. You take a big deep breath in, hold it, and then slowly release it. Do it five times. You know what? I've tried that. It absolutely works. And scientifically proven, deep breathing increases the flow of oxygen to your brain and stimulates the nervous system, promotes the calmness, brings your awareness away from your worries in your head and it quietens your mind. Maybe some of you need to do something physical. God's created our bodies. We need to look after them, don't we? And have that take some control back in our minds. Maybe... Take that moment, do some deep breathing and allow, as you quieten yourself, as you calm yourself, the presence of the Lord, allow the creator to bubble up. David, I think, learned how to do some breathing. Psalm 131, it says, but I have calmed and quieted. So when you find yourself in that situation, the stress that you're facing, the fear, breathe. In Holy Spirit. Find the scriptures to overcome. That is the Holy Spirit. Right there. <laughs> Have the band back up. So, what would it look like if we started conquering our fear? If we walked in the truth that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Love of a sound mind. Not only would that be helping ourselves, but actually, what would, how attractive would that be to people in our life? How attractive would it be to people who don't even know Jesus? 
They see us handling situations very differently to how they would. We feel calmer, feel more at peace. When faced with turbulence, stress, fear that comes in. Wouldn't that intrigue people? Wouldn't that make people wonder how we have such a hope in that situation? Choose today to write a different story. Exchange the what ifs to I can. I can overcome. I can do this. All things are possible with you, God. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Amen? Well, let's stand. It's a real simple message, but it's real. We face this every time. And so what I want us to do in this moment as we pray, I'm sure you've been thinking of things that you're facing, fears that you um, deal with yourself. And I, I want us to name it today. Call it out. Let's be practical about this as well. Maybe you need to take that step and talk to somebody about it. Do it. We're all family. We're here together, standing as one family, whether you're at home or in person. We, we are family here. We are with you. We are fighting with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's just close our eyes. Do a bit of deep breathing. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And just between you and God, just... Just name that fear. Name that thing that you're facing, that you're feeling anxious about, fearful or worried about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just give ourselves to you this morning. We open up and we have an honest conversation with you. We name our fear today. I name mine fear of man. I give that over to you, God. We name it today. We thank you that you have conquered it all. We thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us. Lord, help us to live that. Help us to live with the power of the Holy Spirit, that same power that, was, that raised you from the dead, Jesus. God, we've got the same power this morning. God, your perfect love. We thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your perfect love, God. Thank you, God, that you love us so much that we don't have to strive to be anything, but just to be. Thank you, Lord, that you have conquered it all. We thank you for your truth. Help us, Lord, not to be fearful. Help us, Lord, not to be trapped in this the grip of fear. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you paid it all on that cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you today. We do an exchange. We lift our fears before you. And we accept your love. For you haven't given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us one of power and of love and a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I just had the prompting of the Holy Spirit then just, maybe it's uh, somebody at home or here that you just are battling with this one thing. You just, you're just in this moment with, in your room with God and you're like, God, I pray for this every single day. And it's a constant battle. God wants you to know that he wants to give you his peace. He comes to you today with the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to walk in the Spirit. God, I just pray that you will break um, strongholds. I pray that you will just bring release in the name of Jesus. That fear be gone in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for those who are worried about their kids. Father, that you'll bring peace to their situation. Lord, you've got them. Perfect 
Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, we worship you. We exalt you. We're so grateful, Lord, for what you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus. You are our champion. You are our champion. 